Hey, how's it going, YouTube followers? Today I'm gonna to bring you the 2021 Giant XTC SLR. This is the aluminum version, 29er. As you can see, this bike comes with a SRAM SX package, Eagle 12 speed. So far, I gotta tell you, for the bottom end, it actually works really good. It shifts very fast, no hesitation, no clunking. It's just working really well for an SX bike, because I'm sure it's on the heavy side. This bike is on the porky side. Uh, I forgot what the actual weight was, but I think it was around 27 pounds with no pedals when I first put it together, no bottle cages, no nothing. All right, since I've had this bike, obviously I put my giant composite cages on there, some Supercast bottles, some regular standard Shimano SPD pedals on there, just something I had laying around. I'm not sure what model they are, part of the long ones. They work just fine. I changed the seat to a contact SL seat. The saddle that came with the bike was just too big, bulky for me. Not my preference. Obviously, I dropped my stem down a little bit. I'm not going to cut the steer on this because, you know, who knows if I want to sell the bike someday. No sense cutting it down. Okay, components here. Well, giant new, was their new fork, the Crest series, the 34. It is bulletproof. Uh, I don't think you're going to break this thing anytime soon. It's heavy. It's smooth. My only complaints are I'm at 140 PSI in there. That's the max you can go. And as you guys can see, the fun meter at 100 meters of travel, I'm about 90% in, so I, I use at least 90. Where I'm riding today, for those of you who know, this is a Lair State Park in Wall Township, New Jersey. There's no big jumps here unless you're doing the actual, what we call the parkway jumps. This was just all the drops and the XC and the roots and everything. And I'm almost bottoming it out. Uh, the actuation on it, it's a little clunky, a little noise. You hear the air going through it. I have rebound set for maximum, and it still uh, rebounds too fast for me. It's a little on the bouncy side. If you're going to do some serious XC, you need to replace it. This bike comes with the XCT aluminum wheels. Hubs are now actually, even though they look like the old giant tracker hubs, are actually made by Shimano. I have no complaints with the hubs. This thing's got a great freewheel sound. It engages really quick. I had no problem with any skipping today. It just worked perfectly. No complaints whatsoever there. All right, as you can see, once again, back to the fork. It's got a remote lockout on it. I'm not a big fan of remote lockouts for the fork. I don't need it. I'd rather have the space up here. Give you an idea how it works. There it is, locked out. Unlock it. I also changed the grips. I was never a fan of the giant grips. I like my ODI band series grips on my XC bikes. To me, they just work better. Standard Shimano brakes on it. You know, they kind of get you out of the package in every low-end bike. Remember, this is a $1,300 bike. So, they work. That's all I could say. They're not great. They're not crappy. They work. The bike stops. All right. So, tires are my favorite thing on this bike. They went with the Giant Maxxis Recon Race Tire. I got to tell you, this tire in this area just works perfectly. But here's the thing. They're rated for 35 to 60 PSI. At 35, way too hard. I'm coming in today about 210, 215 pounds-ish, and I ran about 22 in the back and 20 in the front for a little bit, and then I pumped them up to about 25, 28. 25 in the rear and 28 up front, a little firm up there, a little more. I'm pushing down on the front end, and I gotta tell you, it was sliding a little bit. I, I would probably bring them back down to maybe 22, 24, and that's probably the goal weight here for me. Bike looks great. I mean, a lot of people give a lot of compliments. They're thinking it's something different. You know, a lot of people thought it was the Fathom, but um, it is the XTC. The difference between the Fathom and the XTC, for those who don't know, one's a trail, one's an XC race. What that means to you is you're gonna have fa faster steering on an XC bike. It's gonna be a little more twitchier if you're not used to that. And as you can see, coming with a longer stem, the Fathom would come with like a 60 millimeter stem. This is about an 80 on here, I believe. So it puts you a little more weight over the front bars. And also you're on a straight bar on XC bikes as opposed to a trail bar to have a little rise on them. Of course, you could change all that and basically turn into a faster steering trail bike anytime you want. So for $1,300, what are my impressions? I would say if your goal is just to get a fast bike, has a light frame, and you're looking to change the parts as time goes on, I would recommend it. If you think you're getting a race bike at $1,300, Obviously, then you're gonna have issues. You're gonna be disappointed All right, it does have boost spacing so you can obviously upgrade to better wheels So they're gonna have all that right there for you 
change your cranks, change your components, and then you got a perfect bike. $1,300, it's a great bike. If this was a $2,000 bike, I'd have a lot to complain about. But that being said, it is what it is. You're getting way more for your money than what you would expect. You can come out here all day long and, you know, even on this bike today, I was able to shred this place up pretty good. I'm sure when I look on my Strava, I probably got a couple of PRs from my last bikes. You know, so I definitely hit this a little faster than I would on my Anthem here. So I hope this helps you out a little bit. Any questions? Oh, and yes, you can put a dropper on this bike. I know some people always ask about dropper posts. You have the opening here. Take this plug out. You can run your wire through, down into the bottom bracket, work it back up. You would need to take the bearings out to do that, the bottom bracket bearings, and then put a dropper post in. Most XC guys don't run dropper posts. You really don't need it on this bike. But my recommendations, new fork, upgrade your wheels, and then your components, and you got a good, a great high-end bike here with an aluminum frame. And a lot of people, they're not comfortable with carbon frames on the uh, off-road, and I understand that. One good side jump and hit a tree in a top tube and kiss your frame goodbye where aluminum's going to give you a better fighting chance here. All right, I hope that helps. Any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll answer them as fast as I can. Good luck, take care, and enjoy your rides.